Welcome back. Tonight I've got a really cool project that I've been working on for a while. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen this stupid thing uh, with the wires coming out. It's just a battery with a charge module and, you know, ground clip and then a uh, full voltage, 4.2 fully charged or 3.85. The lower voltage one's just running through a diode. Uh, but this is basically the next step of this hardware here. I want to build a power supply that I can use to test or, you know, just benchmark Game Boys, I guess. Uh, so I designed this cool little PCB. By the way, JLC PCB offers matte black finish on their boards now, and it is very nice. Um, so this is pretty simple board. It just uses two 18650s in parallel. I have the two here. You just solder those on there and then you just pop your batteries in. I'm probably only going to use one because I don't foresee ever needing two of these in parallel. This thing's only 400 milliamps and it lasts me more than enough. 400 milliamp hours, excuse me. And an 18650 is like four times that. Um, and again, you know, I'm only using it for small, relatively low voltage, low power stuff, so I think it'll be okay. But beyond the 18650, need a power switch here. Uh, I already lost it. I actually put a fuse in the design. Uh, unfortunately, all I have are 500 milliamp fuses. I had originally planned on using a 1 amp fuse, but I don't have any, so <laughs> hopefully 500 milliamp will be fine. Probably not on some of the Game Boys I'm using, but whatever. We'll make it work. Worst case scenario, I'll just short the damn thing out and use no fuse. Um, and then I have two... Oh yeah, the TP4056 module for charging, and then two generic modules off of AliExpress. Uh, now hopefully these work. I have not tested them at all. This first one here is an LM2596 DC-DC. Uh, I believe this is... I'm forgetting the word. I'm having a brain fart, but it takes a higher voltage and brings it down to a lower voltage. And then this one is the MT3608 boost converter, which takes a lower voltage and boosts it up to a higher voltage. Now, the reason I need two of these is because I'm using a nominal voltage 3.7 volt 18650 cell which ranges anywhere from 3 volts to what 4.2 and I want to be able to power something that runs off of two double A's which would normally take mm, about one and a half volts to about three volts depending on if you're using the nickel metal hydride or alkalines and the level of charge blah 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 but I also want to be able to power uh, things that run off of lithium ion, which is this. I could just use this for that, but I want to be able to use this as well. Uh, this is actually something that I didn't know existed until very recently. This is basically one of those panels that you'd see in a um, like a cheap bench power supply. It is a volt and amp meter like that. So you get the thing powered up and the top one is volts, the bottom one is amps, as long as you have it wired properly. And this thing is super overkill for my purposes here, but I think it's going to work out pretty nicely because it's a little bit more precise than some of the other generic modules. Um, I'd pick this one up first before, you know, without even thinking about it. I'd started this project because I wanted something uh, a, a little more... Um, I guess accurate than my cheap multimeter above 200 milliamps and I picked this thing up but I realized it's not going to give me the the values that I want. Also I plug this thing in, it's not hooked up to anything and it's registering you know 0 0.02, 0 0.03, it's, it's garbage. You can't calibrate that out. There's a little screw on the back to adjust that but it's already down as far as it goes. It doesn't go any further so this thing's garbage, we won't be using it. This one's new hotness, we will be using that. Okay, so first thing, 
Uh, I want to solder on the battery holders last, just because I want to be able to keep this flat on my on my uh, bench here. I've already got my soldering iron on, so I think I did this kind of backwards, and um, looking at it, I'm not too sure how well it's going to work out, but it's going from the battery to the TP4056 module to this module here, and I've got to adjust this one so that it's higher than the max voltage I'm going to be using. And this thing needs to be powered as well, but it looks like it supports up to 28 volts, which should be way more than we need. Um, I have no idea how high this thing goes, so let's find out. Uh, v out, V in. Power that up here. And oh, I should have grabbed a screwdriver so I can adjust this. I wasn't really thinking about this until I got all the parts in hand, but um, one of the things I'm going to do differently with future revisions is instead of having to use these shitty little adjustable potentiometers, I'll have an actual knob on here. And I fixed my meter, by the way. It was the connectors, so I just cut them off and soldered them in. Switch that over to volts. So you can see it's already boosting up to 17, which is probably fine. But because my uh, other voltage converter can only go as high as this thing is, I might as well give myself the extra... Eh, you know what? We'll leave it at 24 volts. Give or take. Uh, so yeah, this thing says it takes up to 28. All right. So just to test that out, hopefully I don't blow it up already. Should solder this. So just poking it. Yeah, that's fine. And if we use the yellow wire as well, should be able to see 2408. Perfect. So I can unpower that. And now we want to get this soldered down. Oh, let's do the fuse first because that's tiny and I'll lose that. And this is, I already forgot the size, uh, but it should just be 0805, yeah. But this is a resettable polyfuse, which means, in theory, if I do blow the fuse, all I have to do is switch the power off, and it should reset. And switch it back on, which will hopefully mean I don't blow anything up. No promises, though. I will. Oh, there goes the AC. I will share a um, the Gerbers for this and the bill of materials, but just know that this is entirely at your own risk. As of this point in the video, I have no idea how well this thing works or what your chances of blowing yourself up are. Hopefully, works pretty well and your chances of blowing yourself up are pretty minimal, but sometimes that's not quite how life goes. Okay. And I did make the footprint for this, but I ended up not using it. I found another one online that looked a little bit better than mine, but looking back, I'm thinking maybe I should have just used mine. Hopefully this will work fine. No, nope, that's not working. 
And I'm going to need some more heat for this. Turn it up. Also, in hindsight, I should have used through hole mounting on this, but whatever. This is not the most reliable way to connect parts up. Yeah, what's the worst that could possibly happen, right? I'm just going to do a quick check here, make sure everything's wired up. Alright, so V in and V out minus should be, bring that into frame, huh? Should be shorted. They should also go to ground, which they both do. V in plus should be battery plus, no? Oh, out plus, yeah. And then the out plus should be the in to this. Yep. Okay. Looks like we're all good. Next up is this thing. Let me test this out before I solder it on. Oh, that's probably fine. I didn't realize there was an LED on it. And it is putting out 3.6 volts. And I can not adjust that up, but I can adjust it down. Ton of spinning though. Yeah. Hindsight, I should have made provisions to wire up a different thing. But I'll make it work. It'll be fine. Okay. There's something on the bottom there. There we go. Wasn't sitting flat. There we go. Oh, I should have straightened this before I did the other pad. Shit. Probably can't fix that now. Nope. Oh well. Will forever be crooked. At the very least, it gives me the benefit of being able to see this one as it as the solder 
weeps through. Leaks? Weeps? That's not right. Creeps? Good enough. Doesn't seem to be working the way I want. Hmm. Hopefully it's fine. Come back to that. Figure just add a shitload of solder and whatever you need will soak through. Soak, that's the word I was thinking of. Jesus. Hmm. Can't tell. Hopefully it's fine. Accidentally got some solder in one of those pads. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and solder in the TP4056 module. You could use either a micro USB or a USB-C module. They both have the exact same footprint, thankfully. I'm going to use the USB-C module. And... I can probably use the existing solder because I accidentally got some on this pad here. It's not straight though. I want to make sure it's straight so that no pads are overlapping that shouldn't be. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And these top two pads aren't connected to anything, but I still want to use them to help hold the module down. Okay. That should be all the electronics here. I suppose I can test it out. Um, eh, screw it. Just keep putting it together. It was the worst that could possibly happen. Alright. So, I have this labeled here. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'll add that later. Okay, sorry. Getting, uh, getting sidetracked here. So the amp power, I have four little areas. I didn't really think this through too much. Come on. There we go. So the amp power, the red wire goes in this top left hole here. And then the black wire goes right next to it. And 
and this yellow wire is the voltage reference wire. If you add, if you short this to the red wire, uh, it'll read the input voltage to this panel. I don't want to read the input voltage to this panel. It should always be 24-ish volts. I want to read the output of this, which is going to be, come on, this one right here. I'm probably going to have to desolder that just to get to one behind it, make it easier. But that'll be fine. And I will be right back, just going to take a quick break, let the camera cool down a little bit, and uh, I forgot I had a battery meter port, so I'm going to go find a voltmeter to install. I want to use one of these, except I have some new ones that work on 3 volts. Uh, that way I can just keep uh, an eye on the actual battery charge and uh, hopefully don't run it down too low. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm back. I didn't do any work on this, but I did do a little bit of cleaning, trying to clean up some of that flux. Um, one argument in favor of, um, well, I guess against the mat boards is that it, unless they're perfectly clean, you can really see it on them. Uh, but anyway, back to this. Uh, this is the voltmeter I was thinking of using. This has three wires. It looks like it's wired up to use the power and then a voltage sense line instead of this one, which I had on my desk, which uses the voltage sense line and power in the same thing. Um, I have some of these that don't work lower than about four volts. This is not one of them, so I'll just be using this one because of how I have this wired up. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to share the voltage sense line with um, one of these. Yeah, it, anyway, long story short, I'm gonna continue soldering here. Uh, I didn't really do any work on this thing per se. I did end up plugging in some power and testing it out. And so far so good, it didn't blow up in my face. So we should be good to go, but I'll keep playing, make sure Get everything set up and working proper. And if I can get that in there. Oh, I turned my iron down a little too low. Oopsie. That's why I was having trouble. There we go. And so these are just through holes, like if I was using uh, header pins, uh, but I'm just shoving solder and the wires straight into the holes here. Just gonna add a little bit of extra solder. Make sure these are all happy. I'm going to redo these ones because I don't like how much wire is sticking out. So in this case, I'm just trimming off some extra. So the wire's not so long. Okay. one first because it's the inside. Should have done this first. Whoops. Oh well. And there goes the AC again. Sorry guys. Okay, good enough. So now, this thing should read 4.2 volts. Want to plug it in. I don't have a power switch yet, so 
I'm going to short it out with my tweezers here. Uh, 3.24, I don't know. Maybe it's acting funny because there's no actual battery connected. Oh well. So far so good. Now I just need to add this one. And to be honest, I do not know which way the wires go. And annoyingly enough, this is actually too thick a gauge for the holes I already have. I suppose that's a good thing. Oops, keep open the camera, sorry. Okay. I'm probably going to get this backwards on the first go. Oh, and those still don't fit. It's the super thick wiring. Alright, that's fine. We'll just pretend these are surface mount pads instead of through hole pads. I don't like how close these are together. I'm going to have to change this in the next revision. Let's have that going that way. And hopefully, that works. So there's that. I'll do some cable management on this later. The plan is to have that right about there. And then this will just stick on there wherever. I, I didn't really plan this out too much. Um, I figured I'd just get it working and then make it pretty next time. All right, let's do some probes next. So I'm just using some, oops, a doodle, some orange and purple. 22 gauge stranded wire here and the plan is to solder on these two alligator clips well maybe not this one because this one looks fucked up eh, whatever I'm sure it's fine yeah and I lost it I like using these little IC hooks sometimes Oh, there it is. And uh, last time I bought IC hooks, I ended up just soldering them all to wire. And I don't really feel like I'm doing that. I can, but... It's just easier to clip them and solder them on. Alright. 
So, cut that off there. And I don't know what gauge wire this is, but this is um, not stranded. That's solid core wire. I suppose I can find out pretty easily. Looks like it might be either 26 or 24. I should strip more. Oh, it's 24. Okay. So, the plan. I'll strip more of that too. Because I don't have black and red, I have purple and orange. Uh, the purple is going to be the ground, and the orange is going to be the uh, positive voltage. And I'm going to use my helping hands here, and I'm just going to solder that in there. No, I'm going to solder these two together, then solder that in there. stripped even more wire. I can actually twist these together. It'll be fine once I get a glob of solder on there. Bigger the glob, blah blah blah, something like that. That's not good. Okay. I'm going to fold this instead of trimming it because if I fold it when I solder they won't come apart whereas if I trim it and solder they'll probably come apart okay oops that's gone Try it this way. Go find that clip. Never mind, didn't go far. Oh, and that didn't do what I wanted. Okay. Clamp that down a little. Try again. Now it should work. one, do the next, and I have a similar issue with this one, but I'll make it work. How did I realize the jacket on this purple and the orange wire, really, was so crappy at the time? I probably wouldn't have bought it. I mean, it was still pretty cheap, so I don't really regret it, but it's annoying because if you're holding the wire with anything and you get it up to temperature to solder, it just disintegrates the jacket.
right, and same deal. Should have folded this down first because this one looks like it actually stuck. Oh well. Oh, I think I fucked up. I wasn't thinking about this. Uh, hopefully that goes over that. Yeah, this will work. It's definitely not the way it's supposed to be, but whatever. Yeah, I fucked that up. I should probably put the uh, jacket on beforehand. I was thinking I could come in this side and put it on that way, but I didn't account for this. Eh, I'll get that later. It'll work. Should do. Worst case scenario, I'll just use heat shrink or something. Let's do the orange one first. One. I'm already having trouble with this thing shorting out. Beautiful. So, let's get a power switch in here and try it out. Okay, okay. So, I'll do I need to power something. Let me try. 
Be right back. I'm going to go grab something to power. Well, actually, you know, I'll take a quick break. And uh, when I'm back, we'll test it out. All right, probably should have waited a little bit longer because the camera's still nice and warm, but whatever. I'm I'm anxious. I want to try this out. Uh, so I did manage to get the boots on. All I did, I just put a screw in there to try and even the jaws out. And then it was just a lot of pushing and struggling. Uh, so I've got each lead clamped to one of my leads on my multimeter here. I'm going to turn that on. And that is reading negative. That's interesting whatever. Plug in some power here and turn this on and we can see my voltage display is reading 2.4 volts same as my meter here so I feel comfortable switching that off and popping these leads on over to an actual Game Boy here to try out. So I've got this pocket that I've already pulled the back off so I can access the leads. The uh, red one is the top here. And black one, see this is why I like using the IC hooks too because you can hook that into the spring. It's the bottom. And then, I just gotta turn it on. Come on, just gotta turn it on. Damn, it's not working. I think there's something going on here. You can see when I switch that on, display blanks out. Might be a current issue. Which is a uh, real bummer. I was hoping this would work. But such is life, I guess. Let me try... See, that light on there is real dim now. I don't know what's happening. Oh, you know what? I bet it is. We gotta hook a battery into this thing. I don't think the TP4056 actually works that way. Let's just try it with the battery. This is the worst that could possibly happen, right? What could possibly go wrong? Should use a holder. I'd like to put this in my vise or something. That'd be easier, but this will do. Sorry if that was just out of off the camera. But I'm thinking my issue is TP4056 related based on the voltage that it was displaying. Um, and we've got this battery. Hopefully it's charged. Probably not fully charged. You're not supposed to store batteries fully charged. Also, hopefully that's not backwards. 
All right, so let's try that again on. That's showing, that looks a little bit better. Was that 3.97? Yeah. That's still output in 2.4. Let's try this again. This is the ground. This is a little bit of a crusty Game Boy, but I think I just shorted that for half a sec. Haha! -ha! Yeah, it was the battery. And looks like my gauge here is about right. Flip that on. Because this should be pulling about. 80 to 100 milliamps. Oh, yes. Yes. This is exactly what I wanted. This is perfect. All right. Well, that's that. I guess I'm going to spend some time wrangling this mess. And uh, I'll probably post another up. I'll probably add a little bit to this video or something. But, uh, oops. Must have knocked something off. Or that just shorted. That's cool too. But yeah, I'll be back. And last little bit here. Uh, so I shortened down all of the wires for everything. Uh, it's not actually secured to anything. It's still flopped around by all the wires. Um, I did put a glob of hot glue in there just to hold everything in place because I removed all the little plastic connectors and bent the, the, the contacts down. I want to make sure they don't really contact anything aside from what they're supposed to. Um, and I just covered that with hot glue to kind of insulate it. Hopefully I never have to remove that, but I have a feeling I will at some point. Uh, and then I attach the battery gauge to the actual output meter just with some double-sided tape there. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet permanently. Um, I'm, I'm still playing with it because the placement of the wires, I don't, I don't know. But either way, I'm at a really good point with this. Again, I've only got the one battery. I've insulated these pads in case I want to put a second one in. And I, I, I think I will just for tits and pickles, you know. I don't actually have to put in two batteries. But I have a bunch of the holders and what the hell else am I going to do with this anyway. But if we turn this on, you'll see my battery is at, I don't know, about 3.9 volts. The output voltage is about 2.4. But I can turn this screw here to adjust that if I want to bump it up. And this should go as high as like 20 something, but I don't really want to keep screwing that all the way up uh, so I'm gonna bring it back down to eh, I'll leave it at 2.88 ish and just for one final test here I've got this Game Boy Advance here this is I've already taken out the batteries and removed the battery cover and I just have Pokemon Emerald in here but this is the uh, Taobao Game Boy Advance so it's using that four times integer scaling screen. And if I recall correctly, it's very power hungry. I don't really feel like taking it apart, so I'm just going to try and hold this contact to the uh, alligator clip there. But I think I should be able to do that. Flip that over, flip it on. And we can see, so unlike when I was doing this with my meter, you can actually see how much current it's pulling. So it's pulling at 2.9 volts, what about 255 milliamps, and it's at max brightness. If we bring it down, it goes down to like 155 milliamps. So this is 100% exactly what I wanted to make this for, and it seems to be working perfectly. Um, one thing I noticed, I was testing this earlier at 2.4 volts instead of uh, 2.8, uh, 
and I noticed the power light on this thing was going a little bit crazy. I don't know if it was just because I'm sitting here holding it like that, and that's definitely not the best way to do that. Maybe I'll have to make some like plugs or something to put in there, because I don't want to have to take apart the whatever Game Boy every single time, uh, just to protest in. But you know, I think most of the time I'm going to be using this. I'm going to be. I'm already going to have the Game Boy part anyway, so it should be fine. Uh, but otherwise, I am super happy with how this thing turned out. Uh, I'll be posting the uh, Gerbers for this and a bill of materials, but it's actually stupid simple as far as the parts go. Uh, I think the most expensive part was this panel here. This one was six bucks. But one thing that's different about this panel compared to most of the other ones on AliExpress, this one, that's super hard to see. I took a picture of it earlier. But this uses an STM microcontroller instead of some of those uh, passive generic components that the other panels use. And hopefully that means I get a little bit more accurate reading, a little bit better control, as opposed to one of these that uses these uh, passive analog components. And I mean, you, you saw earlier I plugged this thing in. It was just reading 0.2 or 0.3 amps or whatever it was. And this thing is working out perfectly it's I don't know how accurate it is but that doesn't matter too much as long as I measure all of my consoles with this um, because I imagine it's pretty consistent here but this is the part I was waiting on this means I should have some more videos coming up pretty soon regarding my other uh, mod kits like for example this and uh, I can do a review of the power, the actual power usage now that I can measure over 200 milliamps and uh, have a little bit more control over the voltage. And I'm just super stoked about this thing. I already fucked up one of these wires, of course. I want to get some silicone coated wires for the actual leads here. Uh, but I, I, I plan on eventually doing this over. I want to have, I want to get rid of all these components if I can and just build it all into like one microcontroller that's controlling everything but for now I'll just use the off-the-shelf generic AliExpress components because those all seem it's it's like Legos man it's awesome uh, but anyway I'll go ahead and uh, get this video compiled and uploaded and uh, thanks for sticking with me guys I'm super stoked about this project uh, there's oh one more thing, I probably already mentioned this, but I need to mention it again. I have no idea how well this works. This is probably super dangerous. This is, you're probably going to blow something up if you use it uh, inappropriately. And to be honest, I don't even know what inappropriately means. I don't know the specs on most of these components. I don't know, like, you know, you hook this up to an inductive load, is it going to blow up? You know, maybe you need to put a diode on the output. I don't know. So just use your brain. If it does blow up, you have no one to blame but yourself, not me, yourself. But, you know, if it does work for you, cool. Glad I could help. And, uh, well, thanks for watching. All right, I thought I was done for the evening, but I just want to add one more quick thing while I'm still thinking about it. And I would normally just type this sort of thing out in the description, but I feel like it needs to go in the video. If you do use two batteries, uh, you need to be extremely careful because these are just wired straight in parallel. Um, there is no protection between them, nothing. If you use two batteries, you need to make sure that when you insert them, they're both at the same charge level or one will discharge into the other. And that could be bad. Um, probably won't if they're very close, but just don't do it. Uh, my advice, if you plan on using two batteries, build it with two sockets, insert one battery, and they are marked on the inside. There's a little plus on this side, a little minus on this side. Hindsight, I should have put some markings on the PCB as well. I'll do that with the next revision. Um, but my advice, put one battery in, charge it up all the way, full, remove the battery, insert the other battery, charge it up full, then insert the second battery. And then once you've got both in there, just 
leave them. Don't don't futz with it. Um, and another thing, just a word of warning, because these are in parallel, if you put one in the correct way and then the other in backwards by mistake, you will create a, sh a circuit between the two batteries. They will short into each other and they will explode and you're not going to have a good time. Uh, so all that being said, I still am planning on posting the files for this if you want to make it. It's pretty simple. To be honest, you could just make it by throwing some wires together to wire up all these components, but I like the PCB. It makes it a little bit more concise. Um, but, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, I'll, I'll post these files, but just please use your brain when it comes to this sort of thing, and please be very careful because there are not nearly enough uh, safeguards on this. And uh, in hindsight, actually, yeah, the 500 milliamp fuse was a good idea instead of one amp. But, um, yeah, please just use your brain, because if you do the wrong thing, it could blow up and you could hurt yourself. These things, I know you guys saw the Galaxy Note fiasco a little while back. What was it? The Note 7 or something? They're exploding. Well, guess what? These are the same batteries, and if you mistreat them... They will ruin your day real quick. So I, I know I, I sound like a broken record, but just please be careful, be safe, and, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Love y'all. Good night.